Hi everyone, and welcome to A Picture in a Thousand Words, brought to you by the Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics at the University of Toronto. In this series, we break down some of the most iconic images from space from the perspective of an astronomer. And that astronomer is me. My name is Mubdi Rahman, and I'm a scientist at the Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics, and I'm also your host for A Picture in a Thousand Words. This episode, we're going to be taking a look at the exoplanets around a star that is so wonderfully known as HR 8799. And this is also a bid for why astronomers shouldn't be allowed to name stars. I'm sure everyone in who's watching could probably come up with a more creative name. So let's dig right in. So this we, we have here is a digitized sky survey image. So you can actually go online and see what the sky looked like. These are all just a bunch of photographic plates that have been scanned together. And this particular one, or a series, you can actually see the edges when you're zoomed this far out. Each of these is an individual photographic plate. But we're taking a look at the constellation Pegasus. So this is that center square of Pegasus. And this entire region, that's about one sixth of the sky or 70 degrees. And so, you know, a very large swarth of the sky that we're taking a look at. And the light that we're seeing here is optical light. So the red is the red that your eyes can see. The blue is the blues that your eyes can see. And the green is the green all makes perfect sense. So this is exactly what you'd probably see if you're at a really dark location. Just this was taken with the telescope. But let's try to zoom into this region over here. So now we've got a look at this star over here. So this image is now about five degrees or so. If you were imagining the moon, the moon would be about eh, something like that right? It's still a fairly wide area on sky, and you can start to see this star a little more clearly. This is the star so wonderfully named HR8799. Great name, rolls off the tongue. And it's about 129 light years away. Just to give you a sense, us and our closest nearest star, uh, other than the sun, obviously, is about a light year away. So it's you know, relatively close. It's, you know, just a couple dozen stars away, or, you know, about a hundred stars away or so. And the star, it's kind of normal. It's sort of about, you know, a little bit, you know, more massive than the sun, about one and a half times the mass of our sun. And it's a little hotter. It changes its brightness a bit, but it's nothing too weird. It's a normal looking star. And so let's zoom in a little bit closer to this star. So now we're taking a look at an image that is about half a degree in size. So this entire image, it's about half a degree. Uh, that is roughly the size of a full moon. And now you can see that this star is not just one star. There are two stars. It has uh, what looks like a companion right next to it. And all of this stuff that you're seeing here these little trails that you're seeing, that's not from the star. That's actually from the light from the star that's bouncing around our atmosphere. And it's all getting blurred. The star is still, if you had no atmosphere, if you had a crazy large telescope, and if you had um, nothing in between us and it, it would still look like a point, right? And it does. It. It's just kind of smeared out. So let's zoom in a little more. So now we're at two and a half arc minutes. So just to give you a sense, this is pretty much like from here to here, those are the most fine things that your eyes without any sort of microscope or telescope, those are the finest that your eyes would be able to separate. Everything here would look like a blur uh, without any sort of optical aid. In fact, this star, these two stars, your eyes wouldn't normally be able to separate them. It's only using telescopes that you can really clearly see that they're two separate things. And now we're starting to see, so the, at this point, the star would still just be a dot. If you if there was no atmosphere, if you were just seeing it, you know, as it was, it would just kind of look like a dot. But instead, what we're seeing is a lot of this blur, right? This, you know, classic star shape. And that's caused primarily because 
there are things that hold up mirrors and telescopes and that's what they that's what they do to this image and all of this stuff all that blur is partially because all of the light rays have you know they can't be fully collimated they can't be fully aligned and so they just blur out and their atmosphere adds a little more of this blur but let's zoom in a little more so now this is that same image now we're looking at a region that's four arc seconds in size this is about one you know one thirtieth the size of that previous image and it's hard to see anything though at this point the star itself would still just be a dot the star is tiny in comparison to these uh in, in comparison to this but all of this stuff that we're seeing, that's just the glare from the star, right? This is just light that's been bounced around. Now imagine, imagine if we had a technology that could erase this, that could remove some of this glare and tell us what is beside the star really, really close to that star. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do have that technology. Astronomers have developed that technology. And what we have next is an image taken from the Gemini North Telescope in Hawaii. This is that same, scar, uh, that same star. This is about the same area on sky, but now it doesn't look just all really crazy bright. You can actually see these bright dots. So one thing that I'll point out is that this image was taken in the infrared. And one of the nice things about the infrared in this case is that the stars, stars like our own and stars like HR8799, they end up getting a little fainter in the infrared than they are in the optical. Most of the light of a star like the sun comes out in like yellow light. That's why the sun looks yellow to us. But the infrared is a little darker. And a lot of things that are around it that have been heated up by that star, they get a little brighter. So the ratio of contrast, how much, you know, the how much more bright the central star is versus the things that are around it, that changes. And so now you can start to see some of these other things. And we subtract out that central area of the star. The star would still just basically kind of be a point over there. And what you're seeing are planets around this star. This is one of the first times that we have been seeing planets around the star. It's really hard. It's really crazy to think about. These are planets much like the planets in our own solar system, but we're seeing them around another star. They're called an exoplanets because they're not around our sun. And the way that they made this image is if you take a look at the star, or if you take a look at this entire field, and you let the telescope rotate a little bit, all of the things that are real will continue to rotate around with it. But all of the glare and the blur, that's just going to stay kind of the same. So you can subtract it out with, uh, with, um, with tricks like this. More than that, they're also using what's known as adaptive optics. And there was a recent Cosmo on the couch about adaptive optics, so definitely take a look at that. But what that's doing is it's trying to account for all of the shimmer that our atmosphere is causing, right? The atmosphere is hot and it's cold and that light passes through that atmosphere and kind of gets bent around and that makes it look like a smear. If you can track that, you can try to make the picture a little clearer. And that's what we're doing, or that's what the astronomers who made this image are doing here. But before you think that this is so close to our solar system, remember that the stars over here Earth's orbit would be something like that. Jupiter's orbit would be something like that. All of that stuff is much, much closer into the star than any of these planets that we're seeing around this one. So we were fairly lucky to be able to see that. But now that we know that there are planets around this star, you can stare and take a look at planets around this star we can keep on coming back to it. It's a lot easier to look at something that you've already seen before than it is to try to find something new. And so what astronomers use the Keck Observatory to do is to look at this, at this star and the planets around it over seven years. And this one, you can see four different planets that are all moving around. They're orbiting the star in their little planetary dance. 
all around it. And just to give you a sense, this planet over here, this innermost planet, that's gonna take 45 Earth years to go all the way around. This one that's furthest out, that one's going to be 460 Earth years to make one entire orbit all the way around. So wait, watch out for another episode of this in about 500 years, the year 2500 or so, 2520 or so, and we will catch back, we'll come back and see this planet make a full loop all the way around. But that's all that we have time for today. Thanks so much for joining us for A Picture in a Thousand Words. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and definitely leave a comment in the box below to recommend images that you want us to dive deeply into. If you're watching this on a live stream, still stick around after the episode, and I'll be around to answer any questions that you might have. But until then, thanks so much.